Today, we may simply see the railways as just a way of getting around. In reality, they're just a mere shadow of their former self. What were the railways like before modernization plans? What effect did the changes have on them, and also the people working on the railways? The British Rail Network used to cover a much larger area than our railway does today. Steam engines were the primary source of transportation for people, mail and freight. Using basic resources such as coal and water, they operated all over the country connecting hundreds of towns, cities and villages along main lines and railways that have since been abandoned or closed. Although some famous locomotives remain, such as the streamlined A4 class Mallard, which still holds the world steam record of 126 miles per hour, and the Flying Scotsman, which is arguably one of the most famous steam locomotives in the world, there is an unsung story as to how the old railways affected what we have today. In 1962, the infamous Dr Beeching announced plans for the reshaping of British railways. Also known as the Beeching Report, or the Beeching Axe, this led to hundreds of miles of track being shut down and eventually the modernisation of the railway network. Between the late 50s and early 60s, steam still remained the dominant mode of transportation on the railways. But what did people think of steam engines running through all the time? Well, to be fair, in 1962 the majority of them had finished. So to see a steam engine uh, passing was not unusual, but it was noticeable. At Welling Garden City Station, um I used to uh, take my pocket money and go down there and watch the trains come through. Uh, all steam engines in those days, 1956, 57 time, 58. And uh, I wish I'd paid more attention now because um, we're not running through anymore. Well, when I was at school, I come from Lancashire, I, I used to go down to the station, uh, watching the trains come into the station. Uh, and my uncle was a driver, a steam driver, and I used to uh, get on the footplate with him and have a look round. Um, but to see a steam engine going along the main line at high speed, uh, you ask any train spotter, and that's the highlight of the day. Well, when I was a child, because uh, my dad used to take us on holiday by train, um, I lived in Rugby, and we used to travel down to London by steam train. We went down to Folkestone because his our relatives were down there and we used to get the electric train then from Charing Cross down to Folkestone. So you got both old and the modern, so, so to speak. Not long after the Beeching Report was published, steam started to completely vanish from the railways altogether. The change was quite sudden as the newer diesel and electric trains replaced the old steam locomotives. These required less servicing and were initially more efficient to run, such as not having to spend hours warming up a locomotive. Electrification of the main lines meant slightly faster and more frequent services all over the country, without trains requiring coal and stopping for water along the route. However, for people working on the railways, this was a major change in a very short time, which produced a variety of opinions. From a steam driver's point of view, it was very disappointing, because a lot of the older drivers who'd uh, been driving steam for years, all of a sudden, had to think about circuit breakers, fuses and things like that which they weren't used to. And when, it, when we got the electrics that was even worse because they were fitted with thyristors and, and computers and the rest of the business. So to us as steam men it wasn't a good thing. Well I don't think this island uh, necessitated uh, having so many classes of electrics and diesel. Why do you want to go so fast? It's only a small island. And in any case, there's not many of them that exceed the steam speeds. They can do, but they don't do. I think it was the winter of 1962-63, there was a bit of a, a minor resurgence because of the problems that they had with diesels um, in the extremely cold weather. It was a very bad winter in 63-62. 
So there was a little flourish, a sort of final defiance, if you like, at, the, at, at that time. But they just drifted away. Oh, very sad it was. All the character all went. All the drivers you used to laugh and joke with, they all went serious and they'd all gone. No characters left at all, like they used to be. Eventually, steam disappeared from the railways altogether, replaced by electric and diesel trains, and eventually the modern stock we have today. However, with the loss of steam came about a number of projects such as the HST High Speed Train, or the Intercity 125, which is still in use today, and the ill-fated advanced passenger train, a British engineering masterpiece of its time. Although the APT was not initially successful, it did influence the later units used on the East Coast Main Line and also the tilting technology was used for Virgin set of high-speed trains. Two of the most notable projects in the past few decades are the Channel Tunnel rail link between England and France and also the High Speed 1 railway line which allowed for much faster services from London to the Kent coast and also Europe via the Channel Tunnel. Although steam had since been replaced by modern locomotives, it was, and still is, far from gone. Fortunately, one of the main reasons it hasn't died is because of Di Woodham down at Barry, where he, he took a lot of the locos for scrap and didn't cut them up. He had a load of wagons that he cut up instead of the locos and eventually people went down there and started buying the locos from the scrapyard to restore. And that's why there's so many been saved. Various steam engines were preserved and restored since the 1960s. Some lines that were shut after Beeching Zacks had partially reopened as preserve lines and others had been kept running as heritage lines. Steam locomotives are not restricted to running to these as there are a number running day by day on main lines up and down the country. Whilst filming at the Crew Heritage Centre, we saw the boiler for the Princess Coronation class engine, Duchess of Sutherland, a locomotive that we had filmed a few months earlier and was now undergoing a major overhaul. Many volunteers, both young and old, assist in running and servicing these locomotives as part of our heritage and also for the future. Uh, we spend a lot of time just chasing around watching steam engines on the main line. But it's not just steam engines on the main line, we go to heritage sites where they're around as well, such things as the Neen Valley and the West Somerset, just to see them running in a, a proper environment. Well, I think it's a marvellous thing to see steam locos still working um, on the main line and on preserve lines. Uh, it gives such a lot of pleasure to, uh, to the young and old and disabled people that we get come down here. They're thrilled to bits to see them and uh, of course we all enjoy it as well. Well, it's, it's great. I mean, they should never have been got away with as, as far, done away with as far as I can see. I mean, they must have been able to develop the steam engine because in America, they, 95 I've seen one running in America, and they were, they were oil fired, not coal fired, so they could have developed it, I think. Even as a young chap as I am, it's, uh, it's quite nice to see it happening, you know. Um, I mean, it's never happened in my day. Um, the only time I've ever seen it is, is here, and uh, you get it on the main line, it's getting more and more common, and uh, I think people enjoy seeing it. The railways went through many changes over the decades after steam, including the nationalisation and later privatisation of the UK railway network. There is still some fascination for the railways, particularly with the younger generation. Nothing, however, ever seemed to appeal to people as much as steam locomotives did in the past. Steam was never dominant again on the main lines and only used on special occasions and rail tours. So why do steam engines still attract so much attention over modern railway locomotives? Crikey. I don't know. That's a difficult one. The appeal of modern stuff isn't there because it's mass produced. The steam engines, they have a soul. They're like a living, breathing creature. And I think that appeals to all ages. 
Well, I think the steam locomotives are more popular than uh, diesel or electric locos uh, because they're a living machine. They're uh, sort of uh, very basic fire and uh, steam, the noise, uh, the smell, all the senses are uh, sort of uh, stimulated by it, you might say, as compared with a, an electric or diesel loco, in my view, anyway. Yeah, basically I think steam tends to have more character other than diesel and electric are just a machine that, you know, does what it does. Steam uh, seems alive, a um, bit more nostalgic, a um, bit more romantic um, than the normal sort of stuff. So I think generally uh, people like to see steam. Unlike these things coming through now, which are simply machines which you control, the steam engine is a living machine. Uh, it takes a combination of all sorts of things to get the very best out of a steam loco. Good coal, good fireman, a good driver, favourable weather conditions sometimes. The whole thing lives and breathes. It's not like just having a box on wheels. You can't see anything with a diesel or an electric locomotive. With a steamer you can see all the connecting rods, valve gear working and everything else. Uh, that has always held a fascination for youngsters, especially with the toy train set. Oh God! Wicked! And, and it's like a live entity, isn't it? You, I mean, look, that thing going past, you can't see anything moving, can you? It's just a tin can going past, really, isn't it? It was unlikely we would see any new steam engines built in Britain again, until the A1-class steam engine Tornado, which was built from scratch between 1994 and 2008. Unfortunately, we were unable to film it recently, as it was in servicing whilst working on this project. But are engines like Tornado just the start? Could we possibly see more steam engines in the future, as well as ones that are preserved now? It's tricky to pinpoint what it is exactly about steam engines that appeals to so many people across all generations. But throughout everything we've done on this project, there are some united and common thoughts on the appeal of steam. The appeal of a steam engine is because it's a kind of mystery. The fireman and driver work together as a crew to produce steam manually, effectively, with, with stoking the thing and operating the water and so on. And I think there's that human element in the production of a, a, of a steam engine's power gives it a kind of mystery. I think the appeal of a steam locomotive is that, uh, well, they're fascinating. They've got moving parts, you know, it's not often you go, to a, go near anything, even a car, it's got moving wheels, locomotives, you can see how it's working. I mean, you know, you can see everything that's going on. And uh, I think that's what people like to see, you know. As well as the fact that it, it reminds you, certainly the older generation, of uh, things in their childhood. They're live, aren't they? They are a live thing. You can see all the motion. With a steam locomotive, you, you can see things moving. They can see the side rods, they can see the wheels going round, they can see the pistons working. The thing comes alive. And also, they smell good steam engines. There's oil and there's coal and there's dirt and there's soot and all sorts. But they do smell nice. Just a reason to uh, enjoy yourself at the weekend and do something you wouldn't normally do. So, you know, it appeals to everybody. Right through from me, right through to the older chaps. But uh, I'm having a great time. <laughs> I'm like, hey.